In this video, we'll be checking out how to change the Amiga Workbench title bar with MCP. This is my standard high tech, high spec emulated Amiga setup. You can see there's lots of RAM in there. And if we check out the about page, we can see what kickstart it is, what workbench it is. And those are basically a load of numbers. But you can put the actual workbench running workbench 3.1 at the moment in the title bar. Switching to another configuration, you can see the title bar continues in its own font and you can also see a clock in the corner as well. We're still running Workbench 3.1 but now we've got an all 20 in here and ECS. That's because we're using an Amiga 1200 setup. And if you run set patch on an Amiga 1200, then that will change to AGA and this enable icon simply runs set patch for me so I can run AGA with an icon. So this is now an Amiga 3000 setup. We've now got an all 30 on board. And if you remember the tools download that I gave you some while ago, it had MCP in there and also MUI. So you can see MCP and Magic user interface. And you can run MCP in two ways. The first way, the definitely recommended ways from the startup sequence. And you can also activate that by the shell by typing run nil mcp that should run it and any effects should then pop up on the screen and there's also an icon which is well it seems to be a bit flaky on my setup and if you run the icon it's supposed to run mcp from there you don't need magic user interface to run mcp but you do need the magic user interface to run what i've downloaded as the mcp editor so let's launch MUI and go into another setup and that installs itself to the prefs unfortunately so we'll have to go into prefs and you can find MCP prefs in there I think these come with a file I'm not quite sure but this now works with the magic user interface which has messed up a lot of the fonts even though it's nice and full screen you can see that it's in a weird font so let's cancel that and on the setup with it being emulated i can emulate a graphics card if i run iprefs hopefully it will go into a nice big resolution and hopefully running iprefs means it gets around whatever i managed to do to mess up the fonts so this is it's looking like an eight color workbench and maybe 16 colors and now we can see mcp and we can drag that to a nice big screen so that we can see it with a nice easy to read font you can see lots of tabs and clicking on those tabs will bring up special windows which only apply if those things are selected as a tool to be used you can see tool alias has been selected so i can check those out Assign prefs is also another tab which isn't selected so I've managed to assign loads and loads of stuff here apparently but none of that's going to help me because it's not enabled and also the memory patch as well you can enable chip RAM only fast RAM only for specific tools and sometimes fast RAM only means that they work a bit quicker so you can see different well, screen manager isn't working either I've managed to unselect that and the hotkeys aren't working either but you can see you can assign any hotkey using this mcp package so returning back to the features list we can see activate on type on workbench title not sure what that does alert history you can see most of these are off so i've managed to switch off most of these there is a help button as well which brings up an amiga guide although that isn't working on my setup so activate on workbench title i mean i think that means double click on the workbench title to activate that and and deactivate mcp alert history that's off but we can also edit the alert history as well let's see what that does and any guru data goes to mcp guru data in the s folder so you can see we can switch on alert histories and alert timeout so the box which flashes on and off guru meditation will time out after one second because there's no point reading that so you can also select a timer for that thing to time out so you can see different buttons there app change again i'm not quite sure what that does 
and I learnt time out, that's 250 milliseconds, so that's 2.5 seconds I think, and so not quite sure what app change does, but the assign press is in white, that means it's got a tab of its own, and the assign wedge, I've got assign X on at the moment, so I don't need the assign wedge, the auto mount, I can auto mount CDO, PCO, RAD, whatever drives I want with the auto mount, Boy of Blanker is on anyway, Caps Shift, I think if you press the Shift key that acts as Caps Lock, Change Workbench Title, that's what we need to find. So in this Change Workbench Title, we've got a number of options. You can see if I move the screen around a bit and click on those, it's Change Workbench Title, we've got Title WB, Title PR, Title CS, chip ram fast ram and if you pull down the drag box you can see that that refers to specific things kickstarter version i.e the actual version and wb which is the workbench version that's what we've got installed at the moment pr that's actually the processor that we're using cs is the chipset and you can see chip ram you can display ram any which way you like as a percentage as free ram as fast ram as high as single block and percentage of fragmented ram it doesn't really matter when it comes to ram display number of tasks libraries ports devices display the processor the core processor the chipset the number of free workbench pens which is ridiculous, and the contents apparently of the ENV variable. So you can see all 30 on there. So I've got the chipset, we're in ECS at the moment on my Amiga 3000 percent FC chip RAM. I've actually typed chip RAM in there. You can change that to anything you want, and I've got that FC in lowercase so that prints out the bytes. And so check that out. We can. The RAM is ridiculous, you can even show the free VRAM, the Retina RAM, which I presume is a graphics card feature. So total free RAM, total megabytes, that reduces it, if it's in capital letters, it will reduce those numbers so you can only see the megabytes. Total free RAM in kilobytes, and total free RAM in bytes, chip RAM, there you go. So that's what I've edited there, the chip RAM, and the FF is supposed to be free fast ram there it is free fast ram in bytes so if I change this one to uppercase and change this one to uppercase then hopefully that will move up to the next one and we can also add something here let's call it Dan's workbench so it's now got Dan's on it and closing that down we'll also save it and if we click on use then it's supposed to use that Although, again, for some reason, my workbench is acting up. It worked in rehearsals, but now it doesn't seem to be doing anything. So, we can click on Use to activate that, or we can click on the Test button as well. And that's supposed to do exactly the same thing. Basically, test that out in the menu, so you can see what's changed, and if it hasn't changed, or whatever. But... All I need to do is save that up and reset it again. And you can see Dan's ECS, we're still running it. You can see we've now got 1.7 megabytes chip RAM and 6.8 megabytes fast RAM. So that's kind of rounded it down and shaved off a few numbers. And that's probably for the next generation who weren't used to that being cut down. You can have that in whole megs if you want. You can have that in any kind of fraction or percentage. So that's the title bar. You can change the title bar to whatever you like just by typing in here whatever you like. Put the RAM first, put the OCS last, put the priority first, put the devices last. It doesn't really matter. You can have anything, even an apostrophe S for dance. So let's change those back to what they were before because that's what I prefer. And those gaps, is there an extra gap there? I'm not quite sure. That's four spaces, so let's just reduce this gap a little bit more and hopefully get back to what we had before. So that's how you change the workbench title to anything, literally anything you want. Competition, uh, my channel, your YouTube channel, the shortcut key, your website, the, the button to subscribe. For more, the Patreon link, whatever you want in the workbench title, you can have it up there just by typing it in. So copy mem quick is on, 
crunch patch I haven't got on because that de crunchy stuff cycled to menu we've got on anyway it's a commodity default pub screen we haven't bothered with that DOS wild star is on so that's a um, a star a font search is off because that's a font cache and the four high res pointer I usually have on but I haven't got that on because it's already high res as you can see and HD prefs let's see what that does so if we had a SCSI device plugged in that means you can also lock it out so you can't format it by mistake the hotkeys we've seen the left mouse lefty mouse basically swaps the mouse buttons around memory patch new gad tools new tool types new edit new caps lock so no display beep so we don't want it to beep when the display error comes on no icon board we've seen that is also a program no guru we can have so you don't even need to save the guru delay zero so if it gurus it just resets you don't need the guru on no topaz font and maths patches aren't available patch open workbenches on patch rgb library is on well it's off at the moment uh the blanker patch we don't need that the processor caches we don't need to worry about them quick draw and quick layers are on as well as the RAM patch and the screen activation I'm not quite sure what that does I think that activates whatever is under the mouse pointer screen blanker, screen dimmer and set quantum for quantum hard drive shapeshifter patch snap well we've already seen the snap facility that I had it on before for copying and pasting text that's a priority but you can see snap color snap you can do bold fonts you can do italic fonts you can change the font list what it prints out as crawl speed so you can write it on the text very quickly or very slowly so we've seen snap in the other video and sun options is for a mouse sissy hack not quite sure and finally title clock look at that title clock so it's on at the moment so if we edit that because it's got a plus next to it we can change exactly what it prints out in the same way we can change the title clock hours minutes seconds weekday date in any kind of format international format american format canadian format and even the day of the week as well and so you can have wednesday and the day and the date or whatever so the hours minutes and the seconds are on there as well the pattern underneath that i'm not sure what that means but <clears throat> If we go back to the title we can see it's position x25 so 25 across from the right and one y so that means it's one up i think from one down from the top so that sticks it in the correct position and if you don't have those precisely obviously it won't be in the correct position so i've got some two aliases here if something's asking for more and much more it's just going to go to more a pp more and all those variants track disk prefs you don't need to worry about that calibrating disk drives and never knew anybody that used that in the day or now and wait validate that waits in case you're validating the hard drive wb about patch and i think that patches that to the correct date and wb gauge well that's on that gives us a graphical representation of what we've got in the main folder as soon as we open the drive it'll tell us how full the hard drive is so that's how you use mcp you can see this hard drive is virtually full you can see so that's how you use that package